All right, we are going to continue with actually with this 4049 flip-flop idea thing that we had before. So this is just a try and fix it up so that it works in a more general way. But we're also going to learn a little bit about a few other things. Uh, I, I guess this doesn't quite go with the two other parts I did. It's kind of like the extra bit. But anyway, just to remind you what I'm talking about. So this is my little RS latch flip-flop thing with a 4049 IC. So if I press one button, the light goes on. If I press one button, the light goes off. So on, off, on, off. Um, and looking back, this is kind of like the circuit. These are resistors. We went through this, so go check up on the uh, previous video in order to get some sort of idea about what this is all about. Uh, but the trick here, and I mentioned this in the previous videos, is that we're using buttons here. So these things are changing it. Uh, but I want it to be a little bit more general, and I want to be able to interface with other electronic uh, components which may um, send um, signals down here, but they're not going to be like a button. So with a button, it's either connected or not connected, but that's not the way most electronic circuits work. In fact, what they'll do is they'll either end up sending down a low voltage or a high voltage. Um, and the problem with this is, of course, if I put in a low voltage, then I'm forcing it to low. Um, and if I'm trying to make this one go high, well, it's all gonna, it's all gonna muck up. So if I send, is it, is it going to do that? Well, we'll find out. Uh, well, we'll see actually. We'll see what happens. Well, let's just let's just say this is this is currently low, and we don't want to do this. So if this was low, then the output would be high. Um, but then, and this one is also the problem is is that if we're not actually doing the latchy bit, we're not actually pressing the button. Um, so both of these are going to be low. Well, this is going to cause a problem because if this one is low, then that one is going to be on, and this one's going to be uh, low, so that one's going to be off. So it's always going to end up, this thing's going to, just going to pull it back down again, and it's always just going to be off. So when they're both low, then it's going to be off. But we want it to stay in a steady state um, if they're both low, and only to change when one of them becomes high. So when one, this one becomes high, we're forcing this to be high, and then this one goes low. And when this goes high, we're forcing this to be high, low, high. So this makes it go on, this makes it go off. So that's the kind of idea. Um, and we're going to we're going to provide these signals. So the first step we're going to go. So I have a I have a, what I think will work. We'll, we're going to give it a go as to how to get this to work. But first, we're going to look at something that provides. Um, a source of high and low voltages and that's these little things here these are quite good to get um, there's a simpler one I couldn't find my simpler ones of these but all these things do is provide high low pulses so I believe that this little tiny IC here is a 555 timer well they haven't scraped it entirely off but this one here like it looks like they they scraped off the other one Sometimes they do this so that they hide the, what they how they how they made it. But this one here, I think, this is the moment for my little tiny magnifying glass, which doesn't really help in any way at all. And I think it says five five five. So it is a 555 five, five timer, and we are going to talk about five five timers at a later date. But we have to talk about these things here, capacitors first, and they're going to that's going to come up in a. In a in a video in the near future, and maybe these things too. These are trim trim pots, and so these are used for adjusting uh, the output. But the the important thing about these things is you don't really have to know how they work. But they only have three little pins, and one of those pins is the output pin, and then there's a ground pin and a VCC. And the VCC is just the positive uh, rail or the positive input, positive voltage. So. If I take my little circuit thing, and I'm going to turn it off for a second. So I've got this one already attached up. So I've got, with the really badly colored wires, uh, these two wires are going to ground, and what it thinks is VCC, which is the 5 volt uh, thing, a rail. I'm going to stop calling it thing. It's called the rail, because um, it's like a train line. It's going along there. It's a, a thing there. And this is the output. And the output is going into the leg of the LED and then 
back down to ground. So it's going to pulse up and down between low and high voltages, so ground and close to uh, VCC. Oh, I was going to do my oscilloscope thing, but we'll leave that for another night so we can actually see it. So we won't have enough time for that. But just trust me, you're going to see it actually working in a second. So if I turn it on, uh, it goes on and off like that. So, and you can adjust the speed by playing around with these things. So I'm not entirely sure which is the right one to be adjusting. So the, simpl the simpler one just has... I got, it, I got it to adjust a minute. There you go, now it's going faster. You have to, you have to turn these a fair bit to get them to do anything. Um, so you can adjust this, the rate at which these flash. So if you really want a simple flashing light, this is the way to go. And these don't cost too much. I think they're like, um, like they're less than a dollar. Maybe they're like 50 cents or something if you buy them off AliExpress or eBay or whatever. Uh, so having a couple of these is quite good. So the idea here is we're going to attach these two onto here in the place of the buttons. So bringing this thing back. So we'll do that now. And what I'm hoping to do before we just before we do it um, is so this is my little this is my little my little bar graph well not bar graph little plot of what's going to happen. So this is going to be the input for the on button. So the on latch, this one here, and that's going to be the input for the uh, off one. So they're going to be at different rates. So they're not going to be in sync. And hopefully they'll sort of like because they're going to be uh, you know consistent so my drawing is terrible because these are not these are going to be the same length of time so this is a graph where this is time going along here and this is where it's down low high voltage low voltage so high voltage low voltage so over time it starts off low goes up to high down to low up to high down to low and they're going at different speeds so this one's going at one speed and this one's going at another speed, and so most of the time they are out of sync, but every so often they'll get into sync and they'll be on. So this one, they're almost in sync, kind of, the opposite way around. But hopefully they'll sort of go into sync, go out of sync, go into sync, go out of sync. So if you've ever looked at, like, indicator lights on cars in front of you while waiting at the traffic lights, and there's two cars in, two cars in front of you, and they're indicating to turn, uh, and their indicators are at slightly different speeds, they go in and out of sync. Uh, and so this is what I'm hoping will happen here. But the important thing is, is that this one's going to turn things on and this one's going to turn it off. So <laughs> this one's trying to turn it off every so often. So every time it goes high, so the only important thing, thing, think, the only important thing is this bit here where it goes from low to high. So that's what's going to change the state. So when this goes to high, then it's going to turn the light off, or uh, hopefully. Uh, and this one, when it goes to high, so this is called the rising edge. So this is on a positive edge, it goes and turns it off. And this one on its positive edge, or a rising edge, it turns it on. So they're kind of fighting it out. So this is what I think is going to be the, the output, given this, of the LED. So it starts off being off. And then we come along, and then the on one goes to high. And that turns the LED on. And then the off one goes to high, and that turns the LED off. And then this doesn't matter that it goes down to low here, and this doesn't matter. Oh, this doesn't matter here that it goes down to low, but it does matter when the on goes back up to high from low. In which case, then it's going to. Um, though I actually now that I think about it, it's not. It's going to fight over it, isn't it? So when they're both high, we're going to get this situation. So I don't know what the light's going to look like. Um, so if I hold them both down. Then it goes high, so it does. It does actually matter. So I've got this kind of slightly wrong, but the important thing is, if we can get this to work, uh, this latch to work, then it won't always stay on, or it won't always stay off. I hope. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. We're going to see what happens if we just do the naive way of just plugging it straight in, and then we'll see what happens when we do what I think we need to add in to make it work properly. So let's get going. So first, we'll take this one. And so I know that these two have to go. So the red one's going to the negative, which is bad. This one goes to there. So red and orange go there. And now we've got, uh, so now that, that one's on. And we're going to build up the tension a little bit. We're going to get three more of these. 
um, which are also still the wrong color, but I want to keep them together so you don't have any choice. You would think maybe they, well, they probably do, they do probably sell like, you know, one that was like, well, you can't always match them up to the same color. So I was just saying, you know, bundles of three where they all match up and you can get them. That's, you can, because there's little sensor things that you can plug in uh, to your Arduinos. Uh, they all have a sort of, well, they sort of come out to be a standard sort of layout. And I think this is probably one of those kind of things, but I don't know why you plug one of these into an Arduino. Uh, because they're perfectly capable of doing this, this themselves. Uh, but let's just find out. So, in this case here, I'm going to do... You know, which is the best way around? It doesn't matter. So, this is probably the best way, actually. So, now we've got the yellow being... Uh, there we go, if you can see that. It's a very blurry looking thing on the screen. Um, so yellow is going to be the VCC to the high voltage, green is the ground which makes a lot more sense and blue, good enough, is the signal. So now we've got our two little signals and we are going, we, what we really need to do of course is have little LEDs to show what's going to happen but I don't know if that's going to affect the signal, the, um, the input. So we can take the buttons out, we'll take the buttons out for a second. So this is the signal going into one of these things, and this is the signal going into the other one. So I didn't really have to take the whole thing out. So all we have to do is we're going to plug this one into this signal, and that actually just turns it on and off. But that, I guess, because this one's... But what happens if we put the other signal on? Well, it does that, so it doesn't seem to be making a huge difference. So what I figured you had to do, so that's not, I mean the problem is, is that that's just flashing it according to, which is kind of what you expect. So if this is being low and this is high, so when this is low, it's going to, this thing is going to cause it to go high. Uh, when, so it's going to ignore what this is. So what I'm saying, if this was high, this will make it low because this is low at the moment, and then that's going to be a high output. And then if that's low, so it doesn't matter, if, as long as this one is low, it doesn't matter what the other one is. It's always going to be high on the output, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, so if that was low, that would go high, but then this would go low again. And if that was high, then that would go low, and that would still be low. So low, low all the time. If this is low, it doesn't matter what this one is. And that's not what we want. We want to be able to make this go high. We want to be able to, to have an effect when we when we set this to high. So we don't want it to be affecting the circuit when these things are low. Is what I'm trying to say, I guess. So in this case, if this one is high, it won't matter what this one is, I don't think. So if this is high, the output will be low. And if this one was high, the output will be low, but then this will drag it up to high again. So again, this is just dominating everything. So the flashing you're seeing right now is just the flashing from one of these things. So it's kind of overriding the whole circuit. Um, and you can see it's very steady and it's matching up. It doesn't look like it's doing any sort of random thing. Uh, if we had an LED in there, that's what we should be doing. Um, so let's just see if we can do that. We'll just put an LED. Um, so we're going to change this circuit slightly. So we're going to see if I unplug that one. This is obviously the one that's not doing anything. Um, but if I unplug that one, it stops working. And if I plug that one back in, what happens then? Uh, so you can tell that's going at a different speed. So let's put... I feel like we do. Where's my little bag? Oh. I just haven't thought out what's going to be the effect on the circuit of your inputs having these LEDs in the way. Because we didn't really go through that. Um, but it should be fine because, but I just don't know. Well, actually I have no idea. So, because I haven't really thought about this enough. Because I wasn't going to put the LED. So we put that one in, we'll see what happens. I think I've got this the wrong way around. No. No. 
That just that just stuffs it up entirely. Oh look, it's kind of flashing now. Um, what could we do to get this to work? Hmm. Well, we're gonna we'll stuff that for now. <laughs> We'll come back to that. That could be the fourth video in the series where we can try and analyze what happens if you put like resistors in here. So I want this to kind of be a high. I don't really want this to have much resistance in the way. So it's either high or low. But the way I figured we have to do it is we'd have to use uh, some diodes. So if we put a diode in, uh, where's my little felt, my, my little pen? So in this case here, I don't know if I really want to draw on this one. Um, so it's going to go into there. So we just have um, a diode going in to the circuit. Uh, and this is that point there. So there's our, little, there's our little thing and there's our little resistor and there's the previous stage. So this is going to be my input. So if this was low and this was high, this isn't going to change anything because there's no current flowing because it's a diode. So it's only going to change something when this is high and this is low, which is the exact kind of state that you want it to do. So let's see what happens if we put in some diodes. Uh, and I've got one there, and then I've got a whole pile over here. So the way this is going to have to work is we're going to put the diode so that uh, the little line is going into it because that's going to be the lowest point. So I want the current to flow through here, so it flows from the bit without the line to the from the bit without the line to the bit with the line down through there. Uh, so we'll put that one. What's the wire for that one? It doesn't really matter which one you use. Um, so it's not actually working, is it? Oh no! I had a funny feeling this was going to happen. Um, so this could be like the, oh it failed video. <laughs> Alright. And I can kind of guess why that is as well. Uh, so maybe you just can't do it. Maybe this is, I mean I'm thinking this is the obvious reason why you don't see 4049 based flip flops. <laughs> because they only really work when you do it with buttons. But that's okay. We, we you know we, we live and learn, and it's good to have some fun doing this. Uh, and so that one's going to go like that, and that one works. And it, look, it actually is doing what we want. Oh, of course, because this is the off. This is the off one, so it does work, right? Because um, the off one uh, was just turning it off all the time, and this is the on one. So this is the on one. So hopefully, if we adjust things, and it's actually working, it doesn't look like it's perfectly consistent. It's doing like random jumps every so often. So this is the off one. So if we increase the frequency of offing, and I have no idea if it's actually doing it or not, um, we have to do this. These things, if you move this along it goes much faster. Still not changing it. So maybe that just didn't work at all, which is a real shame. So if I move this one along, it goes on and off. I think this one is just basically overriding the whole thing. So that's not the solution we want. Well, it's kind of, look, it's very erratic. So that's actually quite neat, because then we can kind of see. So we're halfway there. Um, if we adjust these things, can we get a different pattern? Something is definitely going on that wasn't going before. I don't know if this is going to show up on the camera, of course, because it's flickering quite fast. But it's definitely not flickering in a consistent way. Uh, we'll go this way. And this one obviously is making a difference. But this is not the effect that I was hoping for. So, but of course you would expect it to be on more often, right, because we discussed this before, that when you hold both the buttons down, when we tried this, holding both the buttons down, so this is actually the on button, so whenever you hold this button down, it always overrides that. So, 
I guess we kind of have succeeded. So we're only going to be able to find this out if we go through it and do it with the oscilloscope. So let's just do that. Here's my little oscilloscope. Well, I have a couple of oscilloscopes, but this one is a really, really cheap one. Uh, but it has the useful feature that it's small and it, and I'm not very good with these things. So let's not get too hopeful that I'm gonna get it to work. And I really haven't quite worked out um, how it really works. So first off, where's the little plug? Oh, here we go. So this thing plugs into here. <laughs> All right. And it says 50 volts max, but I think we can pull that one off. The only problem with this one is it doesn't have um, Okay, I'm going to change that one. Well, maybe if we up this one to be off more often, it should show up. Hmm. Now, this doesn't seem to change it at all, which is depressing. What was that spiky feeling? Uh, maybe this isn't even plugged in. Well, look at that. That one does change it. And that one changes it. So that one's... So we take that, it, it is it is doing something. So let's just find out. We'll turn this one on and we need to connect this little bit to ground. And I'm going to do that simply by uh, using this terrible piece of wire. And there we go, attaching that one to ground. Uh, there we go, it's doing something. And it's missing the little top bit which we need to have. I haven't done anything properly with this. I haven't calibrated it and I've probably broken it because I'm still kind of learning how these things work. So if I, I really want to see the output of this thing. So we'll put that there. Oh, well, that's not very helpful, is it? <laughs> okay, so how do I change? Okay, actually, we're going to go back to this thing here. So hopefully... Yeah, I've done something wrong. Uh, you have to menu. All right. So this is why I don't want to do this because trigger on that. That sounds fair enough. Um, escape. And well, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing because it's upside down and I haven't used this before. Test signal. Send data, recall something rather, preset. I'm just running if these are triggering. How do I trigger things? Uh, Vipers, Calibrate, and it wasn't more. Auto off, well, that's not very helpful. And menu, menu, no, escape. Uh, auto trigger. Oh, here we go. Auto norm swing. I don't know what these things are for. Internal, positive. What are these things? I don't know what they are. Done. Hmm. What's this thing for? <laughs> well, I don't really know. So, in fact, it stopped working the way it worked before when it was all really cool and it looked like it was making a difference. So, we'll just have to come back to this one. <laughs> So I hope that was useful, like we really got nowhere at all, um, but you did learn about these things and these are neat. Um, and you also learned that I don't know how to use an oscilloscope very well. And maybe if we just check this guy, hmm, look at this, that's a bit odd. Um, hmm, I just want to know how to trigger it properly. Uh, two volts. It can't be that hard, like it seriously can't. Okay. Go away. We don't want that thing. Turn it off. I don't know what it was. All right. Escape. And so... Seven out of eight. I don't know. Positive, negative. Change that. Uh, does that say... I don't know. <laughs> Done. Oh, well, look where we go. We've got something. So that makes sense. Um, then we take that one off. And then we put that one... Nothing has changed. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Menu. 
No, I don't want to do the menu, I want to do that thing. Norm, done. Auto, done. Uh, whatever for. Done. Nothing is changing. Okay, I give up. I give up. I do. <laughs> I've had enough. Alright. Um, I will learn how to use that. I should have used that little oscilloscope that I actually have worked out how to use. But anyway, cool, thanks. I hope that was interesting. We're going to do, next time, we're going to make um, an Arduino little game. Uh, and we're going to learn about more chips, actually. And that one should go a lot better than this one went. <laughs> so, uh, thanks for watching that. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. And bye.